We're taking a look at Quant and how it's holding up and reacting to the FTT, FTX negative uh, news event. So let's go take a look. Well, so far I can see that this is uh, helping me determine that origin lines definitely work. Huh. Crazy. Good thing I drew those lines last week. I don't think I had origin lines for this. That's pretty wicked. Okay, but what just, you know, outside of showing off there. Okay, whatever, my lines work. But um, we already knew that. <sighs> that's a strong ass react. Man, that's gotta be like 20 something percent. Yep, 25. Hmm. Give me a second here. It's not going to go back below that origin line for a while, just like my guess is for BTC. So if it's going to go below here, I bet it takes until December or late November. This is going to take a while. So let's let's create some probability pivots. When to start trading for the to the downside. What is this yellow line? So it's not an origin line, but it is a line going back to the, oh, the lows of this year. That actually might be pretty important. Um, so one of the lines I'm gonna use to try to figure out how can I pivot my positions and my mindset of where uh, this is going? Because right now, honestly, I don't know. This is crazy town for Bitcoin and everything. I don't wanna make a specific guess, but what I wanna do here is I wanna I want to let you know at any moment in time, what should I be guessing? Or should I guess at all with the understanding that ugh, I don't really have good odds either way, right? Does that make sense? I'm not going to just guess and say, this is going to happen for all this because uh, I, I don't uh, I don't think that's a good thing to do right now. But if I did have, did have to uh, say something dogmatic, I don't think it'll go back below this line uh, for a while. Uh, two to three, four weeks or so because of the reaction it's gotten off of it. If you're, if the price of an asset is gonna keep going below an origin line, it won't bounce like this. It doesn't behave like that. It doesn't behave like that. So that's the, yeah, I will say one dogmatic thing. <laughs> okay. But in terms of trading down on this, I would say that I would wait until that yellow line is broken for now. So that this yellow line goes, just connects all the lows from June, 2022. So this is your line in the sand. At any snapshot in time, should I be trading up or should I be trading down for just the next 48 to 72 hours as of now? Oops, what did I just do? I would say as long as uh, price is above that, and I can't give you one price because it's an ascending line, right? It, it moves, the price moves on it. But I would say it's more likely that it'll keep going up. If it breaks below, then it's more likely to, uh, at, at bare minimum, hit this channel line here, which right now is boom. So as of now, hitting this line is not the most probable thing to happen in this very snapshot of time because it's above this yellow line. Make sense? And over time, let's say this comes back up a little bit and goes up here over the next few days. Well, then I'll have to adjust you know, my pivot points because I'm, I'm talking about price action now, this, these, uh, these pivot points might not be valid after 48 to 72 hours, right? But for now, I wouldn't expect to move down to 140 until that's taken out. How big of a move would that be? That's not the right thing, Tim. So you'd get another 5% move. But if you're trying to short that, just realize it easily could bounce right there. So don't try to short it into oblivion if you're using that line as a, as a stimulus, right? Or a pivot point, which it probably will, it will be. 
don't try to hold on to shorts forever, not financial advice, because you can easily get a bounce right back in your face. At about 140. And then it's not probable that the origin line will be hit again or approached until this uh, this channel line is, has been used as resistance or is flown past with velocity. So as of now, it looks more likely that it's gonna keep going, it's gonna keep chopping around uh, sideways or testing up. Up and, and or sideways as of now is the most probable. When would I look for it to slow down if it does keep going back up? I actually think it could come all the way back up here and still be bearish, uh, you know, into December. So 166. So 166 becomes more probable of a target, not yet, but once this horizontal that I've had on here for quite a while, it, when price uses 151 as support, then 166 becomes your most probable next target. But as of now, it's not the most probable because it's stuck in this, it's in this black freaking triangle that I drew a while back which it would still be in there, or actually it is in there now, but it would have stayed in there had FTX not driven a Bitcoin down like that. That's how I would play this. So right now, this black triangle is your no trade zone. I probably, and when I say no trade zone, it doesn't mean, you know, you can't take on a new trade there. You can't enter a position. Although that's what it suggests. It might not, it might be wise not to, right? Wait till you have a reason to guess. So right now you don't have a good reason to guess. But after 151 is used as support, you have a good reason to guess to go long to up to this point, up to that line. You have you have an edge, a statistical edge in buyers on your side that have proven support of the major line. Sellers are going to come into control and buyers will dip out once this yellow line is broken. So therefore you'd have a reason to trade down. Although I would be careful for a bounce here, right? Protect myself, take profits and move stops into profit at that point. But in here, if you're doing it, you're actually, in, you know, according to this analysis, you'd just be guessing. So why not wait to make a trade until you're not just guessing? So that would be my breakdown of quant now that I've had a few minutes to think about it.